On today's Apple Daily, I need to sit down because yesterday was crazy. For the latest Apple news, rumors, and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. So yesterday, Apple Silicon arrived. Uh, our Apple Silicon arrived, our MacBook. I'm sorry if you looked at our premiere at noon yesterday and you were expecting the unboxing. That wasn't what was going on there. That was Apple Silicon arrives, as in today is the day. So I'm sorry if you clicked on that one expecting it. Um, we did do a live stream shortly after that when the actual uh, MacBook Air did arrive. And my word, is it impressive. So we live streamed for... I think about just over an hour, hour and 10 minutes, something like that. And um, we got through a bunch of stuff. So like we started off by running Geekbench on it and the the results were just like mind blowing. 74 something multi-core, uh, single core was like 1712, I think. It was like really high scores, like more than I expected. I thought that, you know, those were some of the best case scenario ones. This was like, we opened the box, we didn't plug it in, we just kind of downloaded Geekbench and away we went. Now, mine is the the 7 core version, the um, the lower GPU. We we ran the Open G, uh, OpenCL, I think. It is uh, the, the graphics benchmark as well. Uh, we ran the graphics benchmark as well from Geekbench and we ended up with 1650-something. Now, I've seen a couple of the guys in our Discord have got the MacBook Pro version. She's always got the 8-core version of the GPU, and they were scoring into the 19,000s, which is just, like, I mean, really big numbers for this kind of thing. Um, certainly, like, way outperforming anything else with integrated graphics on the market. I don't think I've seen a single uh, negative review of this stuff out there so far, but I'm sure someone will find a reason to hate it, but I'm just super pleased. But in today's show, we are just going to answer your questions on Apple Silicon, the stuff that kind of came up in the live stream, the stuff that came up kind of after the live stream, and I just wanted to kind of finish off with as many of your questions as I can. So it's a bit more of a relaxed show today because, my word, I am just exhausted from the amount of, like, gasping and uh, and wide-eyed reactions to things today. I cave answers. Gomea Chawla asks, uh, will Apple dare to go portless with future iPhones um, without providing a better charging solution? MagSafe is rated for 15 watts, but that's not 100% efficient, and I doubt if any wireless energy transmission can compete with USB PD. Now, pretty much everything that uh, we're talking about today is going to be Apple Silicon. This is the only sort of non-Apple Silicon question, but I wanted to just answer it anyway. Um, I actually think MagSafe is great. Like, I've been using it on on this phone which is what we're recording on now on the the 12 pro max um i've been i haven't had any problems i think we're sitting on about 47 percent battery today um i filmed this morning's show with it uh i also used it for the live stream although it was plugged in for the live stream that's the only time that i've actually plugged stuff into it because uh you know for obs on the system here we do need to have a hardwired connection yeah like battery wise i've had no issues so like even if it's not that fast charging Apple has got a way of wanting to optimize everything. So rather than just going for the fastest charger, they might be going for a midpoint between fastest and slowest charging and degrading your battery and keeping your battery healthy for longer. So rather than having to get a new battery after 12 months, for example, which I think a lot of the Androids with the fast charging are probably getting towards that, the battery health is suffering as a result of the quicker charging. Um, Apple is probably finding that middle ground sort of where you're looking at maybe two to three years before you you have any sort of degradation in the batteries. Uh, even with a 15 watt charger, that's still quite a lot faster than we've had with uh, the previous iPhones, especially before the iPhone 11, everything still came with a five watt charge brick. So uh, 15 is not so bad. Ayushman Sharma asks, uh, very confused about whether it would be worth it to wait for next gen of M1 chip, or should I go for the current M1 in MacBook? This is for coding as uh, programming as a developer. Uh, would be having my first ever MacBook. So should I wait or not? Now, next generation of M1 we think is probably going to be the M1X. Uh, if you're looking at the more powerful chips that are going to go into the larger form factor devices. Or probably I would assume next September, October time we're going to be looking at the M2 chip. That just makes sense in terms of uh, naming. But... Um, 
in terms of programming stuff, like I am not a programmer, but I've done a little bit of research. Um, I don't know which coding languages work and which don't, but as far as I'm aware from the results that I've been seeing online, there's very little that doesn't work at all. The only thing that I've heard reports of not working at all that you would expect to work is Pixelmator Pro, which I think uh, MKBHD was having a look at and he couldn't get that to run from the App Store. So that might be something that either needs optimization or for some reason Rosetta is struggling with it. In terms of general programming, um, the best example that I could find was compiling WebKit to see how fast this stuff works. Basically the Mac Mini with M1 is faster than a 10 core Mac Pro at doing this. And it also takes very little hit on the battery for the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, both with M1. Um, to compile WebKit within about 20 minutes uh, takes about 9% of battery. Whereas when they were doing it with Intel, let me grab up the numbers. So 19 minutes, 32 seconds on the M1 Mac Mini, 20 minutes and 43 seconds on the M1 MacBook Pro. 25 minutes and 5 seconds on the MacBook Air, so that was starting to throttle after 20 minutes or so of uh, of high level use uh, with compiling WebKit. 26 minutes and 56 seconds was the fastest MacBook, uh, which was the 16 inch MacBook Pro 2019. Uh, the 13 inch MacBook Pro 2020, this is the Intel version, took 46 minutes and 10 seconds, and the Mac Pro from 2019 took 20 minutes and 11 seconds. So actually the Mac Mini with M1 beats Mac Pro. And then in terms of battery performance on these, uh, the the M1 MacBook Pro and MacBook Airs both use just 9% of their battery life to do that compile. The 16 inch MacBook Pro used actually 39% of its battery in the 20 minutes um, to compile WebKit. And the 13 inch MacBook Pro uh, had only 24% left of its battery, so it used 76% of its battery um, during that 46 minutes of compiling WebKit, and that is uh, that's quite a stunning difference to 9% with these new ones. So, if you're coding and you're compiling stuff, I think you're going to be pretty okay here. So, next question comes from Ordinary Tech, and IK answers: uh, Who do you think would buy a MacBook Air versus the MacBook Pro? I mean, it has the name Pro in it, so what is Pro about it? So, differences basically is what we're asking here. So, the MacBook Pro 13-inch, uh, different to the MacBook Air, has got the touch bar. It's got a brighter uh, display that's 500 instead of 400 nits, I believe. It's got uh, a larger battery. It's got better speakers. It's got better microphones. Um, Apart from that, the actual processor itself is the same, but it is actively cooled in the MacBook Pro, so you have got a fan in there that is going to keep it cooler for longer. So for sustained workloads, like what we've just seen with the WebKit compile, uh, it's going to stay at peak performance for longer. That's kind of the difference. It's uh, a couple of hundred dollars, I think, isn't it? Uh, maybe $300. So is that worth it for you? How desperate are you to get your, uh, your renders done quicker? How quick do you need things to be um, and this is not going to be like snappiness quick like when you're just doing stuff around the operating system we're talking about when your system is at full whack and it's trying to crunch a lot of data so whether that's a video render or if it is batch processing of image files or if it is doing heavy code compiling that sort of stuff that is where you're going to see the difference so Espen Brunek asks, can you try Logic Pro X please? Now, Logic Pro X is not something that I've ever used before, so it's very little point in me doing it. A, well, I would have to spend £200 to get a copy, um, but also uh, I wouldn't know kind of how different it is. So I'm trying to do some research, find out um, exactly how it's doing with those bigger kind of, those bigger files with multiple instrument files and multiple tracks. Um, According to Apple, it should be able to run for like 120 tracks. That sounds ambitious to me uh, without stalling. And I don't know if that's the 16 gig model or the 8 gig model. But if it does uh, at this price point, I think that's probably a pretty massive win.
Lee Carter, I gave answers. Can you try VMware Fusion? Free download, you just need to register for Windows or Ubuntu VM uh, would be fine to try, please. Um, yes, we will do that. I only had a few hours with the MacBook Air today because it is my wife's system and she actually had things she needed to do with it, you know, like work and stuff. That stuff is coming. I've set up my own user account on that laptop so that I'm not going to get in the way of all of her stuff. Um, so that is coming. Uh, keep your eyes open for it. But yeah, just didn't have time to get through that sort of thing today. But it will come. Michael Bradley. Question. My M1 arrives tomorrow. So that will be today now. Uh, I am wondering if Safari on the new SI Max can run YouTube in 4K videos. Uh, as Intel Max can't due to codecs, I assume. Yep, that's absolutely the case. Uh, and yeah, I th um, it was a codex issue. I think that it might be just fixed in Big Sur in general, not just on Apple Silicon Macs. But we did try it today. We watched one of uh, MKVHD, or rather MKB4K's videos uh, in 4K on the MacBook Air. Absolutely fine. Didn't skip a beat uh, and quite happy to run it through Safari. So no problems with that. And Thomas Rundle asks... Hey, I gave answers. How many Chrome tabs can you open in the MacBook Air? Would you say it counts as a multi-core workload? To be completely honest, Chrome, when uh, these arrived this morning, ran like an absolute dog. It was awful. It was an absolute mess. Uh, stuff like Twitter was taking multiple seconds to load. Um, Sarah Dietschy put out a video. Um, really like Sarah's work, uh, but she uses Chrome all the time. And I know there's a lot of people out there that use Chrome plugins. It's one of the things that I, I have to do. And kind of the reason that I'm using Chrome kind of as my first browser at the moment. I've always preferred Safari, but there's a couple of plugins that I use for YouTube uh, to help me with tags and descriptions and stuff like that. Just more like checklists um, that I need to use Chrome for, things like vidIQ. Um, which I can't use in Safari, and that is a bit of a pain, because Chrome this morning was running absolutely horrendously on uh, Apple Silicon. It was very, very slow, very kind of laggy. But this afternoon, in fact, this evening, it's just after midnight here while I film this, Google has put out an update with a native version of Google Chrome. I think they were just waiting until... I think they were just waiting until people got um, the stuff in their hands. So, uh, yeah, it exists. It is good. Um, by all accounts, I haven't tried it yet. So yeah, uh, the new version is around. I will give it a try tomorrow. I don't know how well it's going to work because uh, Chrome is generally pretty much a RAM hog and some of these uh, Apple Silicon systems have got a lot less RAM. Just depends how macOS uh, Big Sur is going to allocate that RAM to Chrome. We'll see. And if you want to win anything from our ESR giveaway, you must make sure that you join the notification squad and let me know in the comments so that you are in the pool of people who could win. ESR case giveaway. Uh, we're going to open another one of the cases that they sent for review today. So, mm, 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 struggle my way through. Because as I say, I don't use knives on this channel. It's too scary for me. So this is the... ESR iPhone 6.7 inch glass case. Oh, okay, cool. So, this glass case smashed the tests. Want to see? Scan the QR code. So, they've got a video, I'm guessing, uh, that shows you the testing that they were doing. And I'm guessing it's a scratch resistance test because it's one of the things that Jerry Rig everything always does in his uh, videos is he gets out the Stanley knife. I wish I kind of had the knife here now, uh, and uh, and sees what level they scratch at. So that looks really good, actually. I think this thing is going to look superb on the phone. But again, as usual, the phone is right there filming this, so I can't uh, show you it on it now. But I will throw the video of this on the screen, and uh, we will also get some B-roll through the magic of editing. Um, so you can see this on the phone and see how it looks. But I think this is going to look really good because the, the new iPhones look great. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of glass. Very nice. So, as I mentioned yesterday, if you want to be in with a chance of winning any of the stuff that you've seen on here, whether you have an iPhone 12 Pro Max or you are interested in charging accessories, there's some Qi chargers, there's some USB to lightning cables and stuff like that that's all coming uh, over the next few days. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning any of it, um, make sure you're in the notification squad, like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, and let me know in the comments that you've done all that uh, by putting in hashtag notification squad, and then I will be able to include you in our sort of draw. We will do it at the end of the week. Cool. Now we've done your questions, we are going to get into notification squad. Daniel Davis, 
Edward Ledeer, Jibin Joseph, Sebastian, ICBJ, JBE, Creative Kids, and Ivan Kelly. Thank you all for joining the notification squad. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, we have got a lot more to come on Apple Silicon uh, once we actually get a little bit more into the weeds with things. Uh, if you've got specific use cases you want to see, um, we have done a few things like We've done a Blender render test, uh, and it's super fast. But yeah, I was super impressed with it in Blender, and that, again, is not optimized. That is just how it is right now. So if you want more Apple Silicon stuff, let me know in the comments. Let me know any specific questions you've got. Use the hashtag iCaveAnswers, and you'll get them answered in the show. Thank you so much for watching, and I might even stand up tomorrow.